There's a place not far from a bustling city where the exquisite surroundings envelop the senses. Where the world's best players gather once a year for a truly unique event. The object is the same. The scoring entirely different. Here, players queue up their sticks, hope for the right break, and rack up as many points as they can in search of that winning combination. Welcome to the 1993 International. The International has had its share of dramatic moments in its seven year history. And year eight was no exception. Using the international scoring system, a birdie is worth two points, an eagle is good for five, and a rare double eagle is worth eight points. There are no points for par, and points are subtracted for bogeys or worse. The international is the only tournament on the PGA Tour to feature two cuts. After the first two rounds, the field of 144 is reduced to 72, and then again to 24 by the final round. For the first time, points are cumulative for all four rounds. The 1993 International, rack them up. In addition to the beautiful surroundings, the incredible Castle Pines layout, and its magnificent clubhouse, a unique aspect of the International that gives it that special flavor is the contingent of foreign players invited to compete. Enjoy. However, the flavor of choice here is... Chocolate. <laughs> Castle Pines has the best milkshakes on tour. And we have strawberry and At Castle Pines Clubhouse during the International, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. How about that, huh? I plan to have about two a day. I'm on the 1,000-calorie um, milkshake diet this week. Milkshakes are good. You don't want to have one of those before you play. You wouldn't be able to make it up the first hill. And there are plenty of hills to contend with at this mile-high course. A Jack Nicklaus design nestled in Castle Rock, Colorado, the awe-inspiring setting adds to the drama of this worldly event. It's, it's just uh, awesome. The, the scenery is great, and the, uh, and the clubhouse is great, too. It's very comfortable, and they treat us like kings. The International attracts royalty from all parts of the globe. But here, they all speak the same language, golf. For the first time in tournament history, points are cumulative over 72 holes. If that were always the case, the outcome of the last three internationals would have been different. John Daly's record-setting 40 points would have won last year. Bobby Clampett's score of 35 would have taken the title from Jose Maria Olathabal in 91. And Elgato Eduardo Romero would have stolen the crown away from Davis Love III in 1990. The taste for the dramatic is here. I'll just eat these and go in for a nap. But be sure to stay awake. The next 20 minutes will have you thirsting for more. Wednesday was adopt a kid for a day as all children were admitted free. More than 150 youngsters watched local favorite Hale Irwin once again conduct an instructional clinic. 
Then they were also amazed by trick shot artist Dennis Walters. Down the middle, out with the flame. Yeah. The kids, however, weren't the only ones having fun on Wednesday. Like Every year, the Pro-Am at the International combines lighthearted fun within a competitive setting, creating an enjoyable day of golf for both the pros and amateurs alike. Sure birdie. Fantastic. Certainly the unique thing about the International each year is its scoring system. One of the best things is its scenery. The exquisite Rockies surrounding the lush layout of Castle Pines enhances any golf experience. And with the setting comes thin, rarefied air allowing for extra distance. Just how much distance? For that answer, fans look to the power of Long John Daly. Now time for Daly to launch it. Fasten your seat belts. John Daly isn't the only player who grips it and rips it through the thin Colorado air. Every player who tees it up at Castle Pines feels like daily for a day. This is great for the ego, you know, because you get up there and you're hitting 300-yard drives. The ball does go. It really does go. It's, it's fun to come out and watch it go. Probably the only time I'll ever feel like John Daly. I mean, the ball flies so far up here, it's unbelievable. Perfect. We're at almost 6,000 feet in elevation, and the guys can just drive it forever out here. So it's no surprise that log hitters like Greg Norman, Davis Love III, and Joey Sindelar have won this event. Oh, he said hit hard, and boy, did it. Take off. Even the irons are going a long way. You know, eight irons that go 200 yards. It is exciting, but and then you find out the course is 7,600 yards long. The long layout, however, poses more of a test to those who actually lose ground in the rarefied air. I'm not a real high hitter of the golf ball anyway, so it's pretty difficult for me here in Colorado. Um, I think the higher you hit it, the better you are off out here. Those high hitters have another advantage besides length. I like the fact that the air is so thin that the ball goes straighter, too. And well, I like that better than the distance. While players may relish the thought of mile-high numbers off the tee, scoring is still the number one objective. By week's end, one player will have his head up in the clouds. It's a unique place to play, being that high up. I enjoy playing up here. It's fun. All of our players feel like daily for a day out here. Feeling like a king for a day was defending champion Brad Faxon, who is looking to repeat as king of the castle. solidly after the first hole I really I hit the ball well hit a lot of greens and made a, I don't know how many birdies but made a bunch I mean I bogeyed nine I was trying to hit three wood and I popped it up short of the water it's the worst shot I've ever hit in my life <laughs> <laughs> but Faxon popped straight up himself straight to the top of the leaderboard trailing in the not too far distance was all-time international points leader Steve Paint with a history of strong first round showings, he was right on line. Made some, made some pops for a change. Uh, you know, hit it close a few times and missed them, but I made some 20, 25 footers, uh, which has been, uh, been lacking lately. <laughs> After his second eagle of the day on the par 5 17th, Paint positioned himself to start off round number two in the number one spot. Also pleasing to the Castle Pines crowd was seasoned veteran Marco Mira choice shot making paved his path to a cozy spot near the top 
I've played poorly for the last two and a half, three months, so you know my confidence has been a little bit low. And today I, I relaxed a little bit more out there, and I didn't put so much pressure on myself. Like you know, it's not a life or death situation. If I had to make or miss this putt, and I putted a little bit better, it freed me up a little bit, and I, I felt a little bit more comfortable out there today. From Palm Harbor, Florida, Skip Kendall. Nestled in a comfort zone of his own was PGA Tour rookie Skip Kendall, who also found a spot near the lead. While Paint led the pack with 14 points, it was far from over as several of the game's strongest contenders were within striking distance. The eyes of the world were focused on Denver earlier in the week as Pope John Paul II and President Bill Clinton visited the Mile High City. It was also one of the busiest sports weeks in Denver's history. The Broncos played in two preseason games, while the Rockies, Denver's newly ordained baseball team, held five home games. Over 350,000 fans entered Mile High Stadium during the week. When Friday rolled around, the pressure to stay alive for the final field of 24 had everyone pulling out all the stops. With a little fun along the way. Defending champion Brad Faxon's seven-point performance on Friday kept his hopes of repeating alive. And when Steve Pate was unable to keep a grip on the lead, Skip Kendall leaped forward. Having finished two back in round one, the 29-year-old Floridian concocted a Friday formula for success. His aggressive play was paying off. You know, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm just taking one day at a time right now and one shot at a time. I mean, I don't, I'm just going to try and have fun and just try and stay relaxed. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to admit, I'm sure I'm going to be nervous and, you know, whoever I'm going to be playing with, uh, you know, it'll be great. Refusing to slip back was Marco Mira. With the cut looming just a mishap away, he was setting himself up for weekend play. got to be concerned with myself and just trying to do the best that I can do and hopefully you know it'll be good enough but you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of golf to be played out there and there's gonna be a lot of excitement on the weekend. With the top of the leaderboard on the top of his mind, Omira was oh so hot. As the threat of the cut grew, a host of other players made their moves challenging both their skills and the course to create pure excitement. Of course, not everyone had an easy time of it. Some players used alternate routes to get to the green. To get within two strokes of the lead, a young yet bold Phil Mickelson holed out for an eagle three on the 17th. Possibly offering a glimpse of things to come. With Phil coming on strong, Honors still belong to O'Meara, who held a one-stroke edge over Kendall and Phil Blackmar. Saturday, moving day. The day 72 players scramble to accumulate points to reach the final round. Only 24 players will make it, where a cool $234,000 paycheck awaits the champion. Everybody say a prayer. <laughs> Saturday had all the players saying their prayers. And one player got a quick answer. With four birdies on the outward half, Phil Mickelson quickly jumped to the top of the leaderboard with 26 points. I made eight points on the front side, and it gave me a lot of momentum going into the back. Uh, unfortunately, there was a rain delay at that, or lightning delay at that time. While Mickelson lit up the leaderboard, dark clouds hovered overhead as a prelude to a summer thunderstorm. 
Here in the third round of the International at Castle Pines, Colorado, young Phil Mickelson has collected his fourth birdie in eight holes, and Mickelson leads this International with a total of 26 stable foot points. After a 45-minute delay, the players were set to resume, some of them hoping to jumpstart their games. Yet the 23-year-old didn't let the delay slow him down. Mickelson continued to make birdies on the longest course on the PGA Tour. I think that you know to make birdies, you need to play smart because they can happen on any, any hole out here, but so can a bogey or double. Ignoring his own advice, Mickelson cleared the green and the gallery at 14. I tried to hit a hard three wood to get it up way up in the air and cut it, and I blocked it out left, and it hit left of the green and kicked left into this hazard of rough grass. It wasn't water, but it was. I couldn't ground my club, and I. To, I wanted to make sure I got it out and I hit it about 50 feet by and I left that about six feet short and missed it. So on a hole that I expected to get one back there, a couple, I ended up losing one. While Phil lost one, Scott Simpson was trying to make a one. Simpson's near ace at the par 3 16th got him to 22 points. And not a moment too soon. The second lightning delay of the afternoon stopped play once again. But the search for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow was well within sight. When play continued, another Phil, born in San Diego, Philip Arnold Blackmar, was having a little luck of his own. After an eagle at the par 5 14th made him five points richer, his birdie at 17 moved him into a tie with Mickelson with 29 points. A buried lie at the home hole led to a poor bunker shot. Three putts later and Blackmar's share of the lead was gone. The final field for Sunday shootout was set. No playoff was necessary as 24 players made it into the final round. Who would come out victorious? Well, you know, we've got uh, Phil Blackmar who's a, you know, can really move it, you know, so the par fives play short for him. And you've got Mark O'Meara, Scott Simpson right there, Norman. There's a lot of players at 22 points, which is only, uh, what, seven back? So that's only three, four birdies. You know, they get off to a quick start and they're playing right ahead of me. It's very easy to, to make up some ground. But uh, I believe that tomorrow, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna end up in the same position I am now, I'm gonna have to play aggressive golf and make some birdies. In only his second year on tour, Mickelson was poised to top the leaderboard over several tour veterans. Colorado sports its own distinctive style, rugged yet chic. Likewise, the international crowds at Castle Pines Golf Club came to see a gritty competitor with a polished star quality. At just 23, this trendsetter had already gathered a following. <laughs> Phil Mickelson has the million dollar smile and a list of golf accomplishments to match. The expectations have always been there for the four-time College All-America, and so far he has lived up to his press clippings. As an amateur, Mickelson claimed his first tour victory while still a junior at Arizona State. Then after joining the tour, he triumphed in front of his home crowd in San Diego. I love the competition, I love, ch I love the challenge, uh, and I love being in contention. I mean, I thrive on it, that's why I'm out here playing because I, I enjoy it so much. On Sunday's first hole, the third round leader was finding himself where one might expect to see a 23-year-old under pressure. His ball nearly disappeared, and his lead definitely did. While Mickelson lost a point, the big Texan Phil Blackmar gained two with a birdie to make it a race. Mickelson may be just a year out of college, but he's cool beyond his years. 
Starting with his chip in at two, he responded with his best birdie string of the year. Four straight birdies translated into eight points, and the rest of the international field was left gasping for the thin Rocky Mountain air. Days like today where I, I got in a bind early on, I feel like that's, uh, even though it's difficult and I'm nervous, that's what I enjoy and love the most. And it, I can't tell you how satisfying it is to come back with four birdies in a row. Phil kept pulling off the shots he needed to keep himself way out in front, even considering how the international scoring system is suited for a quick charge from behind. I was at uh, 40 points, and I thought originally 40 points would, would win. But I wanted to make a couple more birdies so that uh, if I had a, a bad hole or two, I would still be in the 40s. While Mickelson put the rest of the field behind the eight ball, the only player with any kind of chance was 14 points behind. But Mark Kalkovecchia was ready to make a charge. I'm lucky I'm even here because of this, this format. It's the only reason I'm here. Uh, I shot 75, 72 the first two days and uh, just made a lot of mistakes. But uh, I, I cut those out today and, uh, you know, made a lot of birdies. If Kalk was to have any realistic chance of winning, he needed to run the table, and he was doing it. After I birdied 13 and 14, I thought, well, if I finish birdie, 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 eagle, birdie, or something like that, I might have a chance. He has to birdie 15, 16, eagle 17, and birdie 18 to catch Phil Mickelson, but he does birdie 15. He's on his way. Kalk's third straight birdie quickly got him to 32 points. He would need an eagle at 17 and for Mickelson to falter for any hope of winning the title. He got his first wish with his second eagle of the day, giving him 19 points for the round, which would have won every previous international. But at 15, Phil erased those hopes with his ninth birdie of the day. Well, he, can, he can go XX and still win, can he? But I'll give him credit for one thing. When he gets a chance to win, he, he knows how to do it. Uh, he's not afraid of anybody. Mickelson finished with 45 points, the most recorded under the international scoring system, and shot 19 under par, which would have given him an eight-stroke victory in medal play. I consider this a great personal achievement. It was one of the best fields that I've, uh, that I've played in. You know, we had a lot of international players and, and a lot of the best American players were here. And I feel like you're only as good as your last, as your last appearance, your last tournament. How appropriate that Mickelson became the youngest player since Jack Nicklaus, Castle Pines designer, to win three tour events. While the often heard next Nicklaus tag may be a bit unfair, the crowds know this winner has style and he'll be a star for a long time to come. Trying to become the first repeat champions, both Greg Norman and Brad Faxon again surged toward the top, as did Steve Pate. The top point getter in the history of the tournament once again finished strong. Young Phil Mickelson demonstrated his poise under fire. His 45 total points for the week surpassed John Daly's record of 40 set the previous year. Congratulations, Phil Mickelson, the 1993 international champion.